The EU ambassador, Louis du Sureka, has advised that the EU will not interfere in the debate on the theatre except to urge authorities to respect European standards for competitive tendering and competition. The struggle for the municipality of Devol continues as a large number of police forces surround the building and Edouard Duro and Bledion Nalbati battle it out for the mayoral throne. A touristic ship has been completely destroyed by a fire burning near the Karabarun shores, endangering the lives of the five crew members on board. Luckily, no guests were on board at the time. It's six o'clock on Monday the 29th of July 2019. Good evening and thank you for tuning in to RTV Aura's English edition. My name is Alexandra, bringing you the only daily update of the local Albanian news translated into English. The European Union refuses to take a stance on whether or not the National Theatre requires demolition and according to the European Union Ambassador Luigi Soreca, the main concern is this in this scenario is the severe polar politicisation of the issue. The EU diplomat refused to comment on President Meta's request that, until the issue is heard by the Constitutional Court, no decision on the theatre building be made. Though he did ask the government for transparency throughout the tender process. This is the only suggestion Soreka made regarding what is considered one of the biggest current event issues in Albania, as according to him, whether the theatre should be demolished or not is something that can only be decided by the Albanian authorities. As you know, our stance regarding this issue was very clear since September of last year. The EU called on the government to be transparent and non-discriminatory. These should consistently be the principles leading Albanian authorities in this process. What is valued most by us is the belief in the rule of law. The procedures of the tender should be in compliance with that of the EU. Free and fair competition in the market is important, said Soreka in his remarks. However, Robert Budina, a prominent member of the artistic community in support of the theatre, disagreed with Ambassador Sareka that the theatre has become a politicised issue. Meanwhile, the Socialist Movement for Integration asked the head of the EU delegation not to turn into a government lawyer, reminding that the red line is that of the theatre collapse. The theatre is a dividing line for those internationals who, unfortunately, have turned into government advocates. Today marks the final days even for those lawyers who must now finally choose if they are for the establishment of the law or on the side of greed along with the government, said Vasili. Michel Placido is expected to arrive in Tirana on September 3 to support the artists and activists against the demolition of the National Theatre Building. Arion Veliai has once again confirmed the plan for the new National Theatre. Attending a conference of Harvard students presenting architectural projects focused on adding spaces for children, Veliai emphasised that on July 22, the tender process for the tender application process for allowing bids for the new modern theatre will be presented. He invited all interested parties to participate in the process. Furthermore, Veliai announced that he is really satisfied that children were the focus of his first mandate, adding that there was no better way of concluding the mandate but than by discussing issues relating to them. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Eddie Rama has continued with the publication of messages from actors, directors and artists about the necessities of building a new theatre. One such published statement referred to the opinion of director Altin Basha as to why a new building is needed. The director, Altin Basha, one of the most prominent names of the new generation of stage creators, has declared his support, along with the vast majority of the Albanian theatre community, for the construction of the new National Theatre and the destruction of the existing ruins, writes Prime Minister Rama. Following the publication of this message by Rama, the opposition leader, Lulzim Basha, responded with a video calling the Prime Minister a psychotic thief who continues to use and misuse anyone he can in order to protect the 200 million euro deal. For anyone uninformed or misinformed, I am posting below the graphic description of the Rama Veliai Mafia plan for building six towers with a value of 200 million euro. The only reason for the demolition of the National Theatre, said Basha.
The socialist mayor chosen from the June 30 elections entered his new office last Friday afternoon with a keen sense of fight. However, the Democrats did not withdraw from the battle of the Devol municipality. Today, the new mayor of Devol, Eduard Duro, arrived at the municipality at around 6.30 a.m. with an army of police forces in tow, including the rapid intervention forces who surrounded the building. About an hour later, the former Democrat mayor of Devol, Bledion Nalbati, arrived in front of the municipality accompanied by citizens. One with the police by his side and the other with resident supporters. Both claim they are entitled to the mayor of Devol in a similar kind of standoff as heirs to the throne of past times. Democrat Nalbati speaks of the situation as akin to a coup of the municipal office, while the socialist, Duro, called on municipal staff to resume their work under his leadership and to distance themselves from the actions of former directors. The Democratic Party leader, Lul Zimbasha, said via his social network that local government is being usurped and, as such, he warned those responsible that they would face the destiny they deserve. Meanwhile, Ervin Saliani from Devoli said that Eduard Duro will be accused of embezzling the title of mayor, while the opposition will not allow the installation of a stupid junta. In the meantime, in a completely different panorama, Gazim Topchiu was sworn in for the sixth time as the mayor of Malici, and Armando, Sub Armando Subashi started his second term in fear. Business inspections will not only be conducted along the coast, but also in other cities throughout the country. During recent verifications, it has been determined that some operators are repeat offenders. There was one business found in violation for the third time over the issuance of tax receipts. In such extenuating cases, the tax defiance ribbons will not be used to prevent entrance because this action has clearly failed. According to the administrative rules, those responsible for non-compliance of the rule for the third time in a violation go for penal prosecution, said Minister Denai. Among other things, the Minister of Finance and Economy asked businesses to open bank accounts in accordance with changes made to the law. It obliges all taxpayers, whether a small business or a registered taxpayer for value-added tax, even NGOs, to have a business bank account, said Finance Minister Denai. About two weeks ago, Prime Minister Eddie Rama presented the new Director of Taxation, noting that recently there has been a marked decline in the issuance of tax receipts. One month after Prime Minister Eddie Rama's order to punish lawlessness, police have begun the battle against informality, reporting that 30 officials from the local administration have been penally prosecuted. According to the Director of Investigations for Economic and Financial Crime, Lufti Minjorzi, five officials have been arrested in flagrance, including the head of the Dermenas Administrative Unit in Fir and four inspectors from Shkodra Municipality. According to the Director for Economic Crime, investigations also looked into 801 different business entities, of whom 89 were found in violation of the law, and therefore all their representatives were penally prosecuted. The verifications were carried out across 467 resorts with beachfront operations, 162 seaside resorts, 83 hotels, 24 illegal buildings, and in four cases, even for occupied territories and fuel distribution points. According to the police, proceedings and arrests have been conducted for the penal offences of concealment of income, non-disclosure of income with the aim of tax evasion, illegal commercial activity, non-payment of taxes and illegal construction. A fire has completely annihilated a tourist boat near the Karabarun Peninsula, risking the lives of the five crew members on board. It is suspected that the flames started in the engine room before spreading rapidly. The five crew members were asleep when the blaze began, but luckily they managed to awake and issue a distress signal before jumping overboard. One crew member even managed to swim all the way to the shore without injury, while the boat was completely destroyed. The event had occurred at around 4 a.m. in the morning. The, although the ship has the capacity for over 100 people, fortunately none were on board, or the consequences would surely have been much more dire. Border police confirmed they have assisted five individuals whilst confirming that there is no evidence of any current danger. 
According to the police, the ship has anchored near the Karabarun on Sunday due to the inconsistent weather that swept our coastline last night. The ship, named Aquamarine, is well established in offering tours from Vlora to Karabarun and Sazan Island. Sources close to the captain say that just last May, it was recertified for the safety and security of transporting tourists. And that's the news across the country today. Thank you for watching our English edition this evening and be sure to join us again every Monday to Saturday at 6pm for the latest news from Albania. Once again, on behalf of RTV Aura, thank you and good night.